Thank you for staying with us. You're watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Now we're going to look at the national dailies and what the paper is saying in Off the Press. I have with me um, Sani Fage, who's going to join us to review the papers this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's get straight to it. We're going to start with Nature News. And the first headline here, the major headline says, Why Nigerians Flood COP28 Climate Change Summit in Dubai. Um, I'm sure you know that about 1,411 people were there as delegates for this COP28 summit. Um, what are your thoughts on how we sent 1,411 people there? You see, um, whatever we have, we tend to make it a jamboree. Mm -hmm. um, the delegation that Nigeria sent, I think, is the third largest. Um, we and China sent almost the same number. And um, I think the hosts uh, were the highest, then perhaps Brazil. So we are the third one. But if you look at our own contribution to the emission, we contribute less than 0.0%, uh, uh, maybe about 0.3%. China, which cons uh, contribute about uh, one side, more than one side of the emission, has sent uh, equal delegation to us. But I think this, is a, even though it's a serious thing, but we are wasting a lot of resources on the issue. Even though the government come out to defend it, that it is not the one that is putting all the uh, bill, but I think sending such a large number of delegation at a time when the country is in financial crisis, I think that is um, uh, a misplaced priority uh, to do that. Yeah. Um, so I want to read out something. Um, China's budget for 2024 is about $4 trillion, which is about $2,860 per head. Now, Nigeria's budget is about $33 billion, which is about 165 per head. I understand that, okay, you're saying they did not foot all of this bill, but does it even make sense for us to be with China sending the same amount of delegates to the same place when we have no business, I, 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 I want to believe we could have sent less and then we'll still have the same impact. Do you agree? Oh, oh yes, I quite agree with you. Because uh, in the past place, we are not going to make any impact. Even will be all lookers, uh, will not make any impact. Even if we are allowed to talk in that situation. Like I said, we, we contribute about uh, point. Uh, three percent of it, less than one one percent. Here are countries that uh, contribute uh, more than one side, and they send a delegation uh, equal with us. And you know, given their own power, uh, they will dominate the uh, process. So I think it is, a, like I said, it's a wasteful exercise sending such a large number of delegation. We will have gone with. Uh, even the, maybe one sixth of what we send, and mm. yet we make the same impact that uh, uh, we will make. Okay, on the Tribune newspaper, we have a small headline there. We're not starting with the uh, the biggest headline, but we we have a small headline which uh, is quite worrisome to so so many people. Uh, reject Wiki's plan to spend 15 billion naira on VP's residence. Serap tells Akpabio. Uh, remember that the, the, the uh, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory is saying that the VP needs a befitting accommodation and because of that he intends to uh, spend 15 billion building that accommodation for the VP. Your comments please, your thoughts. I think this too is a, another wasteful exercise. Remember in the just a uh, supplementary budget a huge amount of money was uh, earmarked for, you know, a, uh, the build, the same building, uh, I mean the old building, and uh, I think uh, when we had a new building for the vice president, so putting such a huge amount, 15 billion, uh, is uh, uncalled for. In fact, it is uh, insensitive to the feelings of Nigeria. The time we are now is, like I said, uh, we have 
serious economic problem. Then we have serious uh, poverty in the country and hunger. Now, put this 15 billion, compare it with what the government proposes to uh, spend on two critical sectors, that is health and education. The total of them is uh, 12 billion, which means under what uh, the government, uh, the minister is saying, they are going to spend on uh, just the vice president. So if health sector will get just 4, 4 billion, 4% or 4, uh, 4 billion plus, and the education will get about 7 billion plus. So I think uh, uh, the government is insensitive to uh, actually the conditions of Nigerians. And uh, the best thing is for the government, I mean, then now for the assembly to reject uh, that uh, proposal, not to allow it to go because of the, the situation we are in now. Well, um, I, I don't know if the assembly thinks about frivolous spending and saying that this it is not uh, necessary at this time, because like we were just talking with Rume here, is that uh, let them do something also for the vice president so that it will be like that. They are not the only ones spending mm. uh, this money of Nigeria. Remember, they just bought their own cars for 160 million each. Well, um, now there is this um, uh, headline on uh, that tribune as well, just on top of the top right corner, we have FIRS waives penalties interest on outstanding tax liabilities. I don't know if this is the way to go, especially as they are saying they want to make business environment so conducive that businesses will thrive. Is this the way to go? No, I think it's the wrong way to go about that. Uh, because one, the, the, the government put a lot of emphasis on taxation. In fact, they say they are going to raise it because it is one of the major source for the IGR for the government. Now, by the time you raise it, you know investors um, are always worried. Uh, those who are already in the country will fly out and go to somewhere else where the, uh, the taxation and the environment is very conducive. Those who have not come in will be scared to come in. So I think that is a, a wrong thing. Uh, if you look at the major policies in most places is that they make it uh, attractive for investors to come. Uh, in a way, sometimes even give uh, tax holidays, sometimes give all sorts of concession on taxation so that uh, investors will come. But here we are, we are saying we want them to come in and we are frightening them, we are threatening them in fact with more taxes and uh, penalties. So I think that is a, a, will, will be counterproductive to what the government set out to do. So what do you think would be a better solution for this? If you were to yeah, like, the like government. Like I said, you try to create environment, a conducive environment. Uh, in so many places, you have the tax holidays. You have uh, you also cut, uh, uh, you know, the taxation and other things. Perhaps they will find a way to uh, get uh, to uh, provide incentive mm -hmm. for those who have not been paying to to pay. But when you threaten them, I think. Uh, that is negative. Uh, like they say, nobody goes to the tax office uh, with a smiling face. Even <laughs> in the developed country, people have to. Yes, you see, people the money have is out to of be, your pocket. Yeah, yeah, they are then out of their pocket. So I think uh, you have to find a way. But when you take uh, the carrot and stick uh, something Approach. strategy, mm -hmm. even those who are willing, they will not come. After all, tax evasion. Is a worldwide pro, um, uh, phenomenon. Yeah. So when you take people penalties, I, I think uh, given our own situation, many will not come. Yeah. Well, we hope that they make business environment more um, better for people and people don't have to do businesses in a hostile environment in Nigeria. <laughs> Yes. Anyways, let's move over to the punch. And the major headline here says Jakba. That's it. Um, for those who don't know what Jakba is, it means people who are moving away from Nigeria 
to the beyond, to <laughs> probably going to the when UK. When you say beyond, it's just like that dying. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> to overseas, going yeah. to Bring another, another mo moving to another country. Mm. Um, so there are two headlines here, which kind of talks about the Jakba um, thing we're facing now. So the major one says, hospitals reduce outpatient surgeries as 4,000 doctors migrate. And the writers here says 1,197 Nigerian doctors moved to the UK since May 29 and 789 canon nurses, 162 doctors quit. Um, OAUTH closes psychiatric unit over lack of nurses, doctors fold 5% held budget. Also, there's a smaller headline here that says over 150,000 Nigerians applied for U.S. visa in 2023. What are your comments on this whole jackpot thing and how we're losing the resources that we're supposed to have as a country? You see, um, this phenomena of uh, people, you know, migrating to Great Nebraska has been with us for quite some time. But now I think uh, the conditions are making it worse uh, than what we used to have. Um, the reason is that uh, professionals, uh, now we are seeing it in the, like, uh, the health sector, but you know, even in education, in other areas, people are migrating because the working condition in Nigeria is so bad. Uh, people, professionals, are uh, being paid uh, slave uh, wage uh, to do the work. They are overworked, and there is no, there are no conducive. I mean, a environment. The environment is very harsh. You don't have uh, facilities to do it, and uh, they are being demanded uh, outside. So I think um, the government has to look at this uh, issue seriously. Like I said earlier on, if you look at what the government budget on health, those four trillion or something like that, you know they are not seriously concerned with, uh, or at least facing that challenge. So we are going to see more of it because um, of uh, the hard uh, environment here, yeah? and the way you know the government uh, uh, takes uh, the scene uh, uh, rather lightly. They don't quite put it this way, and above all. It is the common man that will be affected. Already, yes. the cost of pharmaceuticals are very high. Uh, people cannot uh, are not affording it, and now they are short of uh, medical personnel, and uh, this will translate into the closure of some vital wards. So we will we'll have um, a very uh, critical situation in Nigeria as far as health is concerned. And I think as far as education also is concerned, this is what we are going to see. Yeah, I, I believe that health is wealth. And if you want a, a thriving nation, if you want a nation full of people who are able to be able to move it forward, you need to be able to invest in their health. At least they should be able to have you know, coverage for, for whatever happens to them. Anyways, another headline here says, Budget is a smaller headline. It says National Assembly six agencies allocations rise to forty percent, rise forty percent to one point four trillion naira. What are your thoughts on that? You see, uh, this, these are some of the things that we are going to see, especially given the tax schedule that uh, the budget has to be scrutinized. Uh, it was submitted rather too late. Uh, just some days ago, and uh, you know the budget year will start uh, on first January, meaning in less than one month, everything will have to be done. So I think this issue of scrutinizing a uh, sectorial thing and the way the uh, other sectors that they, they, I mean, the way the assembly will be going, I think is just going to be a mere ritual exercise. There will there wouldn't be serious investigation. Uh, so that at least they will scrutinize the thing and uh, give it uh, the proper attention that it deserves. So I believe what the assembly is saying is just a, a political gimmick. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, let's move to the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, we've already treated some of these uh, uh, headlines that are here on the Vanguard newspaper, but we have this National Assembly Committee to propose uh, commence quick amendment of sections of uh, PIA. 
So the PIA, uh, they want to uh, commence quick amendment of the sections of the PIA. I wonder what sections they want to commence uh, amendment to and what Nigerians will all uh, want to see in this amendment, amended PIA. Yeah, you see, now that when uh, we have to wait and, and uh, cross our fingers and see which uh, section are they going to do, but I think the PIA, uh, this thing is just a new thing. And, uh, you know, at the time, in that uh, it was being uh, worked out. You know, the, the, the necessary measures have not been taken. So now we are seeing uh, the, the result of a kind of a rush job, even though it stayed for quite some time until when the last government brought it out. And even then they just push it uh, to get it through. So I think um, we, people are looking forward to seeing which... Uh, uh, a part of it will be reviewed uh, so that uh, perhaps uh, it will bring some reprieve to Nigerians. We are hoping that uh, they will do a very serious thing and take into consideration the plight of Nigerians. Okay, we also have this headline here, um, a financial headline. Nigeria's economy uh, begins major shift as oil sector rebounds. That is what they're saying. I don't know if you also uh, agree that it is the, a major sh shift for the better. Uh, also, as the federal, the secretary to the government of the federation says to Nigerians, keep faith, there is hope for Nigeria. Let's tie these two together and see what you will ass assess Nigeria as. Are we rebounding? Are we coming back strong? Uh, do we have that hope? Uh, have you seen the light in the uh, at the end of the tunnel. Let's hear what your thoughts are. Actually, to me, I haven't seen the light, and I haven't seen us taking the right measure to go into the tunnel so that we can see the light at the end of it. Um, this bouncing, you know, petroleum or the oil sector is a major honor, of course, in terms of uh, uh, foreign addition, but in terms of the GDP, the other uh, on the economy, the impact is agriculture. And we seem to still continue to neglect uh, that one. So I think this is a, a major challenge that we are putting our eggs in one basket and uh, we seem to ignore, uh, to ignore others, which will have been, had it been with this uh, diversification seriously, I think well, there will be hope for that. And the second thing is, you know, the extravagant uh, expenditures on non-productive uh, areas. You see uh, the budget proposal now, if you divide it into three, uh, more than one third of it is going to debt services. About a third of it is going on recurrent expenditure. Uh, less than one third is going for capital uh, project. So I think we are not taking the right step on the, in that direction. So I think that is why I say to me, I don't see us taking the right step to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Mm. All right. Let's move over to The Guardian. And the head, major headline here says, over 60 refinery licenses inactive 18 years after as fuel import thrives. Um, so we have like 60 um, refinery licenses that have that are inactive and I'm sure some of them are modular refineries for a nation that um, has crude um, and we have about 60 refinery licenses. Should we even be having the issues that we're having right now? Yeah, had it been we are serious with refining our needs and uh, exporting what we don't, uh, the, the excess, I think we wouldn't be in the problem that we are. But given the corruption are surrounding the scene, that is why after 18 years, uh, you know, licenses license were not uh, utilized for about, by about 16, uh, I mean 16 of them. So I think if they even investigate, they will find it, uh, there are even more than this number because it is very cheap and, uh, you know, the, the corruption will thrive easily when we put on, on the importation 
uh, uh, emphasis on importing our needs. But otherwise, had it been we have these modular uh, refineries, and also we revive the major ones that we have, I think we wouldn't be in this situation. After all, if the, the government will go deep and investigate, they will see that the money we spent over these years um, is more than enough to establish more than five new refineries in Nigeria. And yet, we still depend on uh, you know, importation of our needs. And which is the irony that uh, Nigeria is perhaps one of the major importers uh, of, I mean, exporters of crude oil, and we are the also the importers of our of refined uh, oil. So I think uh, this is a very serious problem also. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. This is where we'll wrap it up on the, uh, the paper review on Of The Press. Thank you so much. We've been speaking to Sani Fage and he's been helping us to review these papers on um, everything we have on our national dailies. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. You want to stick around for that?